is cooking. Hello and welcome back to the WWE Wrestling Talk Show with Lisa Rock Jones and Sean Randy Smith. We are here today to bring you a three in one special edition featuring NXT TakeOver Chicago. Money in the Bank. And the spoilers, and we do want spoilers. Definitely yeah, spoilers. For the United Kingdom Tournament. So let's start off with the prequel show to to Money in the Bank with NXT Takeover. NXT Takeover Chicago featured five matches, and it kicked off with the NXT Tag Team Championships with the Undisputed Era times two of. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong defending the Tag Team Championships against only Rokan and Danny Bruss. Uh, how would you rate this Tag Team match then for the NXT Tag Team Championships? Uh, I would probably rate it as typical Tag Team action. There was a number of advantages with the Undisputed Era, of course, because they had the NXT North American Champion, Adam Cole, in there. Oh, baby! That rings off. Yes, and despite a valiant effort by the challengers, it was... The total elimination on only Rokan that resulted in the pinfall and the victors, and still the NXT Tag Team Champions are the Undisputed Era. Thank Riley. Next, we had Ricochet take on. Oh, Kogan. <laughs> Sorry. Take off the Velveteen Dream. One full Velveteen Dream for Hulk Hogan because he came out dressed as Hulk Hogan. So what does he think here? The Valentine Hogan Dream? No, as we've heard before, the Velveteen Dream has not had much success when it comes to uh, takeovers, having lost several matches against the now NXT champion Alistair Black. So, how, so was there plenty of high octane action you asked in this match? We say yes. And it ended with a six thirty cent on performed on the Velveteen Dream by Ricochet. And continuing the Velveteen Dream's defeated system when it comes to uh, NXT TakeOvers. So his losing streak at TakeOvers continues. First we had the loony, crazy, 
Vicky Cross, former member of Sanity, defend challenge Sena Blazer for the NXT Women's Championship. So how would how do you think Vicky Cross did in this match? This is her first match since leaving Sanity. Well, considering that uh, the NXT Women's Division has taken a tiny bit of a uh, revolution change, I was gonna say I was gonna say hit with uh, the classics of uh, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Sasha oh, yeah, Banks, yeah. Bailey, Ember Moon now on the main roster. In any event, this match ended up in the same way that Sainer Blazer ended Ember Moon's run as champion. Yes. By having uh, Nikki Cross pass out rather than tap out. And the match ending by technical submission with the referee's stoppage. Shayna Baszler won by TKO. Yes, and that is a UFC move. Yes. The question I have is when Shayna Baszler uh, comes to the main roster, do they put her on the roll and have a feud or form a stable with... Uh, Ronda Rousey. Oh. Do we put her on SmackDown and have her as SmackDown's equivalent of Ronda Rousey? Only time will tell. The co-main event saw so the undefeated in singles competition, Lars Sullivan. Go against the NXT champion, Alistair Black. Uh, this is the battle of two heavyweights here for the for NXT's richest prize. Now, I think it's safe to say that Lars uh, well, Sullivan going into the been impressive, if not a slight favourite. Lance Sullivan attempted to end things by uh, hitting the freak accident onto Alistair Black, who counted and hit not one, but two black masses to keep Lance Sullivan down for a free count, retain the NXT Championship and giving Lars Sullivan his first pinfall loss in NXT. Yep, you heard us right. Lars Sullivan is no longer undefeated. A bit like someone else I know. Asuka. Yes. What about Asuka when we get to her? And then the Colvin event dates back to about this time last year. Once upon a time in NXT, there was a tag team called DIY. No, it doesn't mean do it yourself. They uh, rose all the way up to become NXT tag team champions. They did, and they were a very successful team. However, once losing the titles and losing their rematch. Tommaso Ciampa turns on Johnny Gargano by sending him into the stage and then sending him off an announce table through a few tables. However, due to a injury, this rivalry wasn't able to progress any further. After that. So Johnny Gargano would go after the NXT Championship for a while until he was screwed out of it by the returning Tom's Ochapa. 
at NXT TakeOver New Orleans the night before, well actually two nights before Wrestlemania the two would face off in a unsanctioned match one of the most brutal NXT matches we've ever seen and this would be a, also a match to reinstate Gargano to uh, NXT because uh, he had been excluded after losing a NXT championship match. So, this this would be very this match, however, this time would be a Chicago street fight. Oh, yeah. We were in Chicago. Now, uh, I'm whether this match topped the unsanctioned match is a discussion that people will have. But after all the weapons, including crutches and ripping the ring apart to expose a wooden part of it. And handcuffs. Yes. Gargano got a bit overzealous because they were, because they reached the point where they were getting Tommaso Ciampa escorted back to the room, back stage. Yes. Officials were trying to pull Gargano off of Ciampa. They would not win the bell despite Champa tapping out. So, Gargano was caught coming into the ring with an elevated DDT onto the exposed part of the ring. One, two, three, ouch! Which means that the winner of the match this time was Tommaso Ciampa. Now, whether this feud has ended, we do not know, or whether they do one more match at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn the night before SummerSlam, and then one of them goes to the main roster afterwards, or even both of them, we are yet to find out, because the card to Brooklyn is not quite taking place yet. No, but that about does it for NXT TakeOver Chicago. Join us in a couple of minutes for Money in the Bank. So then, enjoy the music.
run through money in the bank. We'll start off with our first one-on-one -on -one match. Oh, don't, don't jump the gun yet. Oh, on, no, on the kickoff show, please show, the Bloodstock Brothers defended the Smackdown Tag Team Championships against Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Going into this match, who did we think was going to walk out with the SmackDown Live title titles? Well, I, I was expecting the Bloods and Brothers to win. And I was expecting Blood to walk out with the titles. After a relatively short match, seven minutes, Harper and Lauren performed the reckoning on Luke Gallows to retain the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. However, they may have a big problem in the coming weeks yes. by a new team called Sanity. Oh yes, Sanity have not long made their debut. Now, as we go to the main loss, the matches of main show matches. The show opened up with Daniel Bryan against Big Cass in a rematch from Backlash. Yes. Now this match has was noted for several things. What? One that this match was better than their match of Backlash in my opinion. Two. After a relatively quick, well, after surviving of the big boot and several level attempts, Daniel Bryan was able to, to pick up the victory by once again getting the big cast to submit, which gives Daniel Bryan his second straight pay-per-view victory. One-on-one well, -on -one pay per view victory since coming back to competition, and finally, this match would prove to be Big Cass's final match in the WWE because just three days later, or two days later actually, he was fired. From the WWE. For reasons that we understand, apparently he was gaining heat through various segments with Jimmy and uh, yes. for some reasons as well. Yes, uh, he is, he has political views that shouldn't really affect your workplace, but he is apparently a strong supporter of WWE Hall of Famer. President Donald Trump. It's the thing we started off with the show. The, the, then he had heat from that segment about a month ago where he uh, beat up a midget dressed as Daniel Bryan because he was told only to boot him. Yep, and he went off script. And he went off script even after Vince McMahon himself told him not to uh, do anything more. Then there was apparently an incident on the tour bus during the European tour where he was uh, couldn't open the door from the bathroom and knocked it down. So, uh, the cast, you'll be missed by the universe, not. Next we had 
Bobby Rashley take on Zami Zayn and this match I'm not going to spend too much time on because quite frankly this was a squash um yeah because the winner of the match was the winner of the match was Bobby Rashley and just like in a bit, in a way just like uh, Big Casper for different reasons this is the last time that we will see Zami Zayn in 2018 because he is now shuffling with an injury which, I, which I've heard will keep him out until WrestleMania time. Yes, whether this, whether this injury was picked up in the match itself, I'm not 100% sure, or whether he was dealing with it before. The next match was the Intercontinental Championship match between Seth Rollins and Elias. Now, question is, did burning down Seth Rollins burn down? Elias is tall. Yes, this, it was a great match because Seth Rollins does know how to uh, put on great matches. Many the ball, sir. However, he did have big knee problems in this match. And in the end, Barry, and I do mean Barry, escaped with the Intercontinental Championship having to the sort of a trick of uh, rolling up the types. It's a, it's a same, however, that uh, Seth Rollins' Intercontinental Championship reign would end just 24 hours later when he uh, did an open challenge which was answered by Dolph Ziggler and with a tiny bit of help from Drew McIntyre was able to win his sixth Intercontinental Championship. He's still got some way to go before beating you just made the list. Now I've been watching this for far too long. This is exactly where I see this going. Dolph Ziggler's contract with WWE is apparently up in the summer. Yes, it is. The way I see this going, Drew McIntyre will turn on Dolph Ziggler and either at SummerSlam summer, summer or slightly before will be the person to Defeat Dolph Ziggler to become Intercontinental Champion. Question is, will it happen? And of course, one of the reasons for Rollins to lose the title was to put him back into the Universal Championship picture. But we'll get into that in a minute. Next contest was the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. The first of two Money in the Bank ladder matches. We had four women from Raw and four women from SmackDown. Representing SmackDown, we had Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Lana, and Naomi. And the fourth from Raw? Natalia, Sasha Banks, Ember Moon. And Alexa Bliss. So, how do we rate this year's Women's Big Bang Ladder match to last year? Well, we haven't got a lot to go off. The one thing I would say is that the women's match, you can probably tell, is slightly less brutal than the men's. Of course, we had ladder bumps left, right, and centre. One thing which did not change in this match, however, was the fact that uh, 
Becky Lynch had the briefcase just like last year and was just inches away when Alexa Bliss would make an appearance and take him off the ladder and grab the briefcase which means Miss Money in the Bank this year is Alexa Bliss too bad she won't hold it for long and we'll get into that in a while well, what was the next match? next match was Roman Reigns vs Jinder Mahal Long story short, Roman Reigns won. Pretty much similar to the Sami Zayn, uh, Roman Reigns won. Squash, let's move on. Uh, it, it wasn't necessarily a squash because it did last 15 minutes, but yeah. We asked the question with. It was. Uh, is Carmella ready for Asuka? Well, we'll find out as Carmella. Defending her SmackDown Live Women's Championship against the Empress of Tomorrow. Now, I have most of this match, and I do say most, was uh, controlled by Asuka. Up until one crucial point. Yes, because there was a distraction caused, then there was a kick, and then there was a free can. So, the winner of this match, and still SmackDown Women's Champion, is Carmella. We have just a tiny bit of help from uh, James Ellsworth. Yes, you're, not hear- you're hearing us correct. James Ellsworth is back in the WWE. They let one. They let one man go. They bring someone back in. They can bounce Ellsworth in. Then again, I will say Ellsworth left on good terms, and I will admit the, thing, the stuff he they had him doing with Carmella before his contract expired was good. Well, it makes sense. We stick with SmackDown Live as we go to the last man standing match for the WWE Championship. Yes, with AJ Styles put the championship on the line against Shinsuke Nakamura. And in overall, this would be Nakamura's fifth. Yes. WWE Championship match. The last two championship matches last year when Jinder Mahal was uh, WWE Champion. He lost clean at the at WrestleMania before hitting Styles in the in the ding dong area. <laughs> But then, then their matches at the Greatest Royal Rumble and Backlash ended in a no contest or draw. Yeah. So, it's Nakamura just chose the stipulation to be the last man standing and whilst competing in uh, Japan, Nakamura has not had the greatest success in last man standing matches. So what did we see here? We didn't see that much weaponry. We saw a Kinshasa, of course. Yeah, f- phenomenal forearm. Yes. The styles class from the steel steps onto the floor. The finishing sequence is something I adore because camera comes around even to you, Shinsuke, as AJ Styles delivered a kick to the nether regions, followed by a phenomenal forearm through the announce table, 
which kept Shinsuke Nakamura down for 10 which means that AJ Styles is still the WWE Champion and it surprised most people here because I was expecting Nakamura to win however apparently and I can sort of understand reasoning although some people would say it's a stupid reason the reason for keeping the WWE Championship on Styles was because WWE apparently wanted AJ Styles as champion when they unveiled on Monday that AJ Styles would be the cover star for WWE 2K19 this year. Yes, that kind of makes sense. Now we go to the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, and I think it's safe to say Nia Jax dominated most of this match. She did. However, towards the end, Ronda Rousey would get the amber. Only for Miss Bliss to make an appearance. By blasting, uh, by blasting Ronda Rousey in the back, causing the disqualification. And then Alexa Bliss would cash in, get the uh, win. And then get to last kick next night on Raw. Yes, and now that means Elizabeth is now a six-time women's champion. Five, two on SmackDown, three on Raw. So let's see it. Right, Alexa Bliss is now the new women's champion. And then we had the men's Money in the Bank rather match featuring Bobby Roode. Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Kofi Kingston, Rusev, Samoa Joe, The Miz, and Braun Strowman. And what do we expect from this? Uh, ladders everywhere. But the cut is short. After dominating the field as he does, Braun Strowman is Mr. Money in the Bank. Or is the vehicle Mr. Monster in the bank. True. I would hazard a guess that due to Brock Lesnar being champion, he'll probably cash in at some slam. He probably will. Does that happen, does it? More money in the bank. Now, as we will quickly run through um, what happened in the United Kingdom tournament. So. Yeah. If you do not want to know and wait to watch it next week, spoiler alert! Switch off now, quick! You have five seconds warning. One, two, three, four, five. Switch off now, quick! You have five seconds warning. In a dark match on the 18th of June, Amir Jordan defeated Joseph Connors. Yes. Then, in the, fir- in, in the quarterfinals of the United Kingdom tournament, Zach Gibson defeated the gentleman Jack Gallagher. Joe Kofi defeated Dave Mustaf. Flash Morgan defeated Jordan Devlin. Yeah. And Travis Banks defeated Austin Smith. But the biggest shock of the night. Wait. In a fatal four way. That turned into a triple threat match to determine the number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship. Tony Storm defeated Killer Kerry, Isla Dawn, and Ginny, who was removed from the match after suffering an injury during it. In the semi finals, Zach Gibson defeated Flash Morgan. And Travis Banks defeated Joe Coffey. In a six man tag team match, Pete Dunne, Trent Seven, and Tyler Bate defeated the Undisputed Era. All three members. And then in the 
final to determine the number one contender for the United Kingdom Championship, Zach Gibson defeated Travis Banks. Now, on the second day, the 19th of June, in a dark match, Riago defeated Mike Hitzman. In a tag team match for the NXT Tag Team Championships, Mustache Mountain and Tyra Bate and Trent Seven defeated the Undisputed Era to become new NXT Tag Team Champions. Then we had Charlie Morgan defeat Killer Kelly. Nomad Dad defeated Travis Banks, Flash Morgan and Mark Andrews to become the next contender for the United Kingdom Championship. Adam Cole defeated Wolfgang for the uh, NXT North American Championship. NXT Champion Alistair Black and Ricochet defeated Ethan Carter III or EC3 and the Velveteen Dream in a tag team match. Shane Brazier defeated Tony Storm by countout for the NXT Women's Championship and Pete Dunne defeated Zach Gibson to retain the United Kingdom Championship. Tournament that took place in the Royal Albert Hall. Yep. And we shall see you next time when we uh, come at you either for a small tribute show, which we will get into at that time, or for WWE Extreme Rules. So until then, he's been... We swear off Jones and he's been...